What is going on guys, welcome to Gumbus Videos, my name is indeed Kyle Gumber, and today I'll be reviewing Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. So this is easily the better film of the prequels, and honestly, re-watching re this movie, this movie isn't that bad. It's still got bad qualities to it, I won't call it a bad film though. The Wise of WTF series, well guess what, it's still got some pretty laughable moments in there with memes, and just really kind of moments. And the dialogue in this film is still very shaky, but much better than 1 and 2, because 1 and 2's dialogue, fucking hell. There's still some pretty, pretty bad lines in here. Sometimes they're just like, roll your eyes to the back of your head and then just start screaming shit in Latin kind of bad. They're much more spread out, and they're, you know, far and less in between. So that's good, that's an improvement. Uh, the one thing that it makes this movie a lot better is the visuals. Because this is a visual spectacle compared to the other two. And the other two, fucking Christ, dude. This movie, instantly, when we open up with Anakin and Obi-Wan in space, it's already looking better with the planet, the spaceships, war. The clones still look like absolute shit, though. You cannot deny that. The, the clones still look like absolute fucking diarrhea. When they're executing Order 66 and all this other happy shit. Every time clones are on screen, I know it's CGI. And when they take the helmets off, it's even more distracting because it's like, Hello there! And then, you know, you got the fucking CGI body and it's like, it doesn't match up with, oh my god. It's just, why couldn't you use practical effects with clones? I get it! If their helmet's on and they're in a fucking background, you don't want to invest in that kind of... Make it plastic and clean it up with CGI instead of doing it all CGI. I never understood that. Now and as a kid, I was like, why do they look so... fake? That's really beside the point because the clones are really not in this movie. I want to get into the, the clones for a second because this is the Clone Wars and uh, we don't really see the clones that much. I get it, that's not their focus. But honestly, when they turn bad... I don't feel anything, not on just the clone side, but on the Jedi side. I'll get into that in a moment. The reason why I don't feel anything when the clones turn bad is because, guess what? The only clone name that they really say in this movie is Cody. I, how, how am I supposed to care for these clones that all have the same face, all look like watered CGI? But I get it, in, the, in this case, that's not the point. Now, let's get to the bigger scale when it comes to Order 66. The Jedi. This epic, dramatic, sad music is playing in the background as these Jedi die. I'm like, am I supposed to feel something? Because, like, let's be honest. If you're not a diehard Star Wars nerd and you didn't watch the, the, the Clone Wars series 20 times over, you're not going to know these Jedi's names for the most part. I, I watched the Clone Wars series... It made me feel a little bit more emotional, except for the Conehead guy, because he wasn't really in the, involved in the show that much. But, like, that's the only reason why I would feel something. But with this movie just alone, I'm just watching people who sat around in the council room just talk die. And there was nothing that, that grand. The thing that really got me close to feeling something was when Yoda, like, felt like, like he felt the disturbance, he felt all that death. That's when I started feeling something. But everything else leading up to that moment, I was like, wow, that's unfortunate. You had a little bit more focus in the other films, kind of setting these guys up. I feel like more people would have cared when Order 66 was executed. And here's another tough part to watch. Like, um, the movie is definitely watchable, but there's, like, this, thank God, this is a very minimal part, but, like, the shit with Padme and Anakin... Tough, dude. It's a little more natural, but that's not saying much. When it's a little more natural compared to the last movie, the good news is when Anakin looks at Padme, he doesn't have the, I want to rape you eyes like an old country buffet. Like, he's got the, damn, you got a tight pussy kind of eyes. That's the kind of eyes I, I was saying there. That It's still creepy, but... It's an improvement. The ending with Padme when she is confronting Anakin for the first time uh, on Mustafar, fucking lava planet. She says probably the worst line of dialogue ever. Uh, she no, no one could have made this line good. 
and the reason why it's bad is not because the only is not natural, because it's super fucking cheesy. Anakin, you're breaking my heart. Let's get serious. <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> dialogue was ass, bro. Oh my god. While we're on the, t the topic of Padme. Wow, I feel like they just kind of shit her to the side. Like, yeah, I'll well, write her later. That's what I get from this, because this. What? What killed her? It wasn't Anakin. Technically, you could say it was Anakin. Oh, you choked her. <laughs> no. She's on her deathbed, giving birth to, to Luke and Princess Leia. And the doctor comes into Obi-Wan and says, I don't know what's going on, but she's dying. We're losing her. And Obi-Wan's like, she's dying. We don't know what's wrong with her. It's like, she lost the will to live. What? Look, I lost the will to live, guys. That does not kill you. I lost the will to live because the one I loved who killed sand people, who killed innocents, who killed younglings, and now I'm giving birth. I can't stand it anymore. I can't live in this place. Fuck you with that shitty ass writing. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> can't make this shit up. You just fucking can't. George Lucas is like this. <sighs> oh, that shit's good. Kush. Hmm. Oh, shit. I gotta find a way to, you know, kill Padme or that's gonna affect the timeline. <coughs> oh, fuck it. She lost a little of her. Ooh. I want to talk about one of the more genuine problems I have with this movie. Like... Like, I think this is my biggest problem. Palpatine, or uh, Darth Sidious, as uh, people will know him. They're leading him up to be this really bad Jedi. And the reason why, they don't explain this in the movie, so that that's a problem within its own, but I'm going to let that pass because they explain it in the Clone Wars, kind of. Uh, Palpatine is so powerful that he was able to hide his own power in front of the Jedi. Which is like almost never been done before. He's super, super powerful, and he's very deadly with a lightsaber. He's just super, duper powerful, and he could have been a greater threat, if not a greater threat than Darth Vader. And then you watch the fucker fight. <laughs> it's the most impractical fighting stance I've ever seen. He's like, hey, hey, ooh, hey. oh yeah, he makes a thousand faces, and that was just cringy as. Fuck. Watching Palpatine, the deadliest Sith Lord there is, fight, I was like, I can beat this fucker in a fight. He's doing that, just go like, force push him in the fucking ankles, he falls down, slight, sl slice him in the throat. <laughs> Whatever. That, yeah, but yeah, that did bother me, even as a kid, I was like, that doesn't look good. And the whole thing with Anakin, as a kid, I thought, like, Anakin turned into the dark side was fucking bullshit, whatever. I can see why people like that now. There is some elements I liked when he is going evil. Like how Palpatine is whispering in his ear, kind of slowly manipulating him to come to the dark side. But, the reason why I still don't like it, <clears throat> is not because of Palpatine manipulating him and Anakin being a total dumb fuck. It's how... Palpatine has to manipulate Anakin. To get one powerful Jedi to go from the light to the dark is bring up him not getting his 
the rank of master. You know what, guys? That's your Darth Vader there. I did not get the rank of master, so I'm gonna kill all the fucking younglings, and I'm gonna betray my master. And I know I'm with comments. That's not the only reason why. But that was the tipping point for him going from the light side to the dark side. That is what made him go like, eh, I'm gonna stay good. To eh, maybe not. That's what made him consider going dark. The main reason the one really flipped that switch to the, the dark side was the fact that he's like, you can get the power of the dark side and then save the one you love. Oh. Then Anakin being the fucking romantic he, that he is, he's like, I will do it to save the Republic. You mean to save your dick, because if you don't have a fucking tunnel to enter that thing in, you're, you, you're going to be so alone. All things considered what I just said, the funny thing is, it's still a decent movie. <clears throat> Between the visuals, the choreography being a little bit better, beside the... The, the Anakin versus Obi-Wan fight, that was pretty choreographed. Epic, but choreographed. The fight scenes look better, they're more natural, the, the acting is a little bit better from most uh, parties, except for the third party uh, characters. And it seems like the people give a shit. And the reason is that people actually give a shit is because George Lucas actually gave a shit. And if you guys are not here, and if, I, if I'm wrong on this, please, let me know, but like, from what I've heard that George Lucas wanted to make this movie. This is the reason why he made the prequels in the first place, was this one movie. And then the question I really have to ask is, why make a trilogy? Why can't you just do a one-off? Then comes the question, like, oh, then, like, you're not really going to care, like I said previously. Then you could have cut out one entirely and, you know, just have the movie start in, like, number two and then make something in between two and three, and then make third the third one, and then I feel like if you just focused more on the relationship between Obi-Wan, Anakin, and all that shit, it would have been better. But the only reason why he made this trilogy is because he wanted to make this one. And, and the passion really does show with between the visuals, the story, because the story is a lot better, it's a lot more focused, and there's a lot more action. And it's not just people sitting around doing exposition all fucking day. So on that end, I really do like it. The villains are a lot better. Grievous, even though he is an icon, like I feel like the the thing with the prequels is they introduce these really badass villains and just kill them off way too fast. Darth with between Darth Maul and this villain, like that's a problem. But like Grievous was a cool part of the movie. I just wish we got got to see more of. Um, yeah, so this movie, between all the, with all those rants and shit like that I did, the movie is still really solid. So I'm going to rate this movie 3 out of 5 stars. It's a, it's a passable movie. It's definitely a way better film than 1 and 2. And I think it was the best way you can end off this trilogy. The sad thing is you had two previous films that couldn't piggyback off that third one. And the other two were a lot better. I'm telling you, this movie would have been spectacular. I want to hear your thoughts down below, guys. I have a Twitter, Instagram, comments, underscore videos. Go follow me there for the latest news and updates on my channel, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all that crap. Later, goodbye.